There's a mineral so perfectly formed, people often question if it's real. Join us as we travel to Spain to explore the origin of this symmetrical mineral masterpiece. I'm Thomas Nagin, and I'm a mineral explorer. I'm the guy that supplies museums, galleries, and private collectors with world-class pieces of nature's art. Come along with us as we travel the globe in search of rare gems, crystals, and other fine minerals. It's not always easy, but it's always an adventure. Barcelona is a popular tourist destination for its culture, history, and renowned architecture. Architecture that was often inspired by nature. And we're here to find our own pieces of Spain's natural beauty. And we have the perfect guide. My name is Jordi Fabre. I'm collecting minerals uh, 40, 40 years. I kept uh, the best ones, or at least the things that I believe that they were the best and I try to build a collection from the countries where I can, can access to the best pieces because I know well the people or I know well the collections or, or they are easy to visit. I put aside pieces from all times, from all mines and with low prices because you need to, to sell it later. Yes. And those are pieces that usually the customers don't, don't see it because they are in boxes and behind, you know. And I believe it that you will like uh, many of them uh, because uh, the quality and price, it's uh, quite good. I really like this piece. This is really attractive. It's got the uh, fluorite on the quartz, and, yeah. the, and, the, and the fluorite's a really beautiful color. Yeah. And then it's crystallized on the front, and then all the way around to the back. Yeah, and the phantom. Have you seen the phantom in the oh, inside the corners? Oh, a yeah. deeper color inside the crystals of the sky blue fluorite. A phantom is a growth that happened originally, and then it's covered over by an, an, an additional growth of the fluorite. So you can see the original growth below the most recent growth. Correct, because the fluorite are transparent. This is from Spain here. It sits up really nicely on the matrix. It's got two different types of crystallization of calcite. To me, it really sparkles. Jordi is a self-described disciple of the famed mineral collector Joaquin Folk, who helped popularize this hobby throughout Spain. Jordi continues the tradition focusing on Spanish minerals, but he also finds special pieces from nearby countries. Oh, you have some nice things here. One from <laughs> Morocco. Uh, this is from Morocco. I know you are not coming for Morocco, but maybe someday you will do something about Morocco, and this is a very nice piece. This is a really nice piece. This is yes. a red quartz. It's uh, colored by uh, hematite. Right? Hematite inclusions. Hematite inclusions make the quartz red, and uh, I didn't come to Spain for Moroccan minerals, but I really love quartz. <laughs> so I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep this piece. Yeah, and by the price and by the quality, I believe that you will like it. That's why I put aside for you. I think this piece here is really great for decorators. It has a nice hole in it there, and it's got the fluorite on top of the quartz, and it's got all kinds of really interesting little cavities in it. Okay. <laughs> That is one heavy rock. <laughs> With a new batch of Spanish fluorite and some other goodies checked off my shopping list, I had a little more time to catch up on the history that surrounded us. The celebrated architect, Antoni Gaudi, once said, originality consists in returning to the origin. For him, God was the original creator. And if the artist looked to nature, then he was collaborating with God. I think Gaudi would have appreciated the natural beauty of minerals. And one can't talk about the history of minerals in Spain without talking about its most famous explorer. Llegaron Colón después de descubrir América y el primer lugar en el que ofreció el descubrimiento de ese nuevo mundo fue en esta plaza, según dice la leyenda. Y trajo con él cosas que nadie había visto nunca antes. Trajo mucho oro, 
que había cogido en América. Trajo indios con él, los nueve indios que sobrevivieron al viaje, porque muchos murieron durante el viaje. Y los trajo para enseñarles a los habitantes de Barcelona gente que no habían visto nunca antes, de piel de cobre. Y trajo con él papagayos, aves llenas de plumas, llenas de colores, que nadie había visto nunca antes. Y trajo con él alimentos que nunca nadie conocía. Trajo patatas, que no se conocían en España. Trajo tomates, que no se conocían en España. Trajo ajos, que no eran conocidos en España, que eran muy picantes. La gente los comía y no sabía qué era eso, les parecía muy picante. Todo eso era increíble para la gente que vino aquí y les pareció maravilloso. Fue como si de repente el mundo se abriese para ellos y descubriesen algo que nunca antes habían visto. Y eso se hizo en este lugar. This was a county, a country full of richness, mostly with minerals. So like silver from Peru, like gold from Mexico, all this stuff from South America, they brought to Spain and they use it to improve the richness they have. And they kept almost nothing in South America, fortunately. Uh, the worst thing was the way that the Spaniards used the, in, the natives from South America mostly to work in the mines. Because they used the people as they are not human bodies. So they put the people in the mines, work as you die, and when they die, they even left the people in the mines. So that's very sad. It happened. Not only Spain did that, many other... The Portuguese also. The Portuguese did that, the yeah. English people did that. So this is uh, unfortunately one of the bad things of the history and one of the f bad things related with minerals. Right. But at the same time, the, the supply of new energy and it's a supply of new discoveries and it's a, a, a way to improve the world. Minerals has no life. They are rocks. But in some way, we can relate some kind of life to the minerals, uh, giving the history which the, those minerals carry on. If you take a mineral from the 19th century with an old label that maybe was in the collection of a king, as it sometimes happens, the story related with the mineral is so powerful that it, it implies for me bigger interest for this piece. And frequently I will take a piece with a long-term history than other nicer, but without history. I am very, very keen keeping the wall story of the mineral. Who buy first, who found first, from the different collections that the mineral passed through and finally keeping all these story labels, if possible, on the behind, because it gives uh, the, the part of life that they don't have. But I will say something that maybe will sound too strong, but for me, it's a part of my family. 40 years you've been collecting? Oh, yes. I started to collect when I had 14, I have 58. So, 44. These uh, four showcases. These four showcases are all Spanish. All minerals. Spanish oh, minerals. Okay. This Great. is a classic Berbes fluorite with probably deeper color than usual with the barite. Right. You can see the blades of barite on the right. corner. That's uh, typical. Here you have a uh, fluorite, a yellowish fluorite with a uh, a blue barite. Huh? Correct. This is from Moscona. Moscona, you can see a lot of yellow fluoride, but not so common to see the blue blades of barite on the fluoride. That's a, that's a really clear dolomite. That's yeah. a dolomite. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Yeah. Very really shady. super clear. Where is this fluoride from? That's well, just huge crystal and just beautiful. This is the start of La Viesca. This was one of the best, and I it takes 10 years going to the home of the miner who found this until I bought it. Oh, and I was very happy it for that. It took you 10 years to get ten that. 10 years piece, going uh, one you had to time listen to and a lot of stories. Time, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, no, always the same story. Oh, always yeah. the same story. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> While Spanish fluoride is a favorite of many, sometimes it's a little more hip to be square. About five hours northwest of Barcelona, in a sleepy little town with less than a dozen residents, Navajoon is the origin of these perfect cubes.
pues eh, en la mina llevo trabajando desde que acabé la carrera, es decir, hace aproximadamente unos 22 años. He comenzado, mmm, yo estudié Ingeniería Técnica de Minas y eh, ayudaba a mi padre en, en, en la mina mmm, y mi padre me, me ofreció, cuando él se jubiló, me ofreció que yo podría seguir trabajando en ella. Yo empecé una colección a los seis años. En realidad, eh, eh, yo creía en la pirita, en el valor de, de coleccionista de la pirita, precisamente porque eh, nunca había visto cubos perfectos en otros minerales. Eh, me pareció algo perfecto para que, eh, darlo a conocer y que los coleccionistas eh, lo pudiesen tener. Mi padre era un poco reticente en aquella época de explotar una mina solamente para el coleccionismo o para la decoración. Entonces él no creía mucho en el tema del coleccionismo. Thankfully, Pedro's love of mineral specimens allowed these world-renowned pieces to be cultivated, putting this medieval town on the mineral map. The reputation of these crystals continues to capture the imagination of collectors around the globe. My name is Daniel Ulibarri. I have been part of Piritas de Navajun uh, for 12 years. I, I love minerals and I'm very passionate about our, our pirate crystals uh, here in Navajun. Ever since I saw the first crystal, I was mind blown. You know, I see them every day of my life and there's always a new crystal that, you know, keeps me, keeps me wondering, like how are these crystals so perfect? So in Peru, we saw what are generally considered the world's best pyrites on a matrix because they're on this beautiful white quartz. But in Spain, we're gonna see what are generally considered the world's best pyrites, the sharpest, most perfect crystals in nature. They go out into the world and these things just inspire people. You see them in rock shops, you see them in museums. I had one when I was a kid. So pyrite is just iron sulfide. In many places in the world, it's, it's the industrial ore of iron that we use in industry, ore of sulfur. And when the iron and sulfide combine in ideal conditions, you get a perfect cube, which is what we see here. It's perfect conditions for growing crystals. If we go to the beginning of the Celtic Beric people that inhabited this area, they used to uh, use the cubes for, for magic. They believed, you know, that they offer some uh, type of, of power or that they could do some sort of like witchcraft with them. And interestingly, even before Roman times, the ancient Celts and Iberian tribes used it as a fire starter. They would use the pyrite crystals to make streaks and get sparks. And then the medieval people, they will eat up a little piece of pyrite and they will believe that it will heal them from stomach pains. So there's been a lot of different uses for it. This is the, the perfection of nature on a microscopic scale, writ large so that we can see it in a beautiful crystal. Minerals are snapshots of our planet throughout millions of years. Every mineral has a history. Every mineral has a special place where they come from. There's only one way to prove that these pieces form naturally, and that's to go to the source. Este es un, el último trabajo que hemos, que hemos empezado. Oh, okay. Llevamos trabajando en esta galería alrededor de los oh, cuatro meses y medio. Es lo más rico, ¿no? Sí. Eh, eh, hemos dado con una zona donde hay bastante concentración de, de piritas y de piritas de calidad, piritas grandes. Es sí. increíble, mucho piritas. Sí, como puedes ver, la concentración es enorme. Uh -huh. Hay muchísima concentración y la, la pureza de los cristales son, bueno, son cubos perfectos. Hay algunos cubos de estos que medidos con un calibre dan aristas y ángulos iguales. Uh -huh. Que eso en la, en la naturaleza pues, no siempre es muy común. Ay, that's amazing. <laughs> The perfect cube. Anybody that sees these specimens for the first time, they always think it's cut or polished. Yeah. Um, I haven't met a single person, doesn't matter what background you come from, even if you're a geologist or a mining engineer that sees a perfect cube for the first time and believe it's natural. It's natural. Yeah. 
until you see this, something yes. like this. Well, there's something really interesting here. So these, uh, these cast features, the little squares where the pyrite cubes come up, there's still this really thin residue right around a lot of the pyrites. Oh. Because you know what that is? That's the heat of formation rind from when these crystals nucleated from bacterial or, or volcanic sulfur origins. They formed within the soft rock and pushed their way out, and that releases heat. Just like when diamonds form, they have this rind around them, and that actually proves they're natural. It's crazy, it's like a trace fossil of the formation of the mineral. Fantastic. And as you can see, you know, actually the high concentration of cubes creates a problem for us to get specimens in really perfect condition. They're so dense that, you know, they'll have contact points with other crystals and, you know, that takes value from the crystal. We, we want it to have as, as perfect, with no damage, as we can. So you're actually looking for something with a medium concentration to yes. mine the best. Yes. That's surprising. Yes, okay. as you can see, I mean, here, you know, there are so many that if we remove all of these, actually, it's a second quality material. It's, it's yours. It's yours if you take a rub. There you go. That's a big one. Yeah. I'm happy. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> as you can see, I mean, that's way above the average of the size of the crystals. We just rinse it a little bit, and you, as you can see, once we start removing the limestone, the cubes really start to shine. It's amazing. It's like a mirror. So actually, there's a lesson here about how they form right above us. You can see the, the rich iron staining. So this is a marl. This is a chalky uh, marl, it's called, after uh, German and England locations. And it's a mix of mudstone and limestone that doesn't quite get hard enough to be limestone. And so what happened is you, you would have had the sulfur in the marl. And then tens of millions of years later, you have deposits over it that, that uh, produce the iron. And you can actually see the iron, that's the red, leaking down, precipitating in with the sulfur. And at some point, these all spontaneously start to crystallize within the, the soft, corroded marl. It's totally unique in all the world, isn't yes. it? With so much pyrite, nearly a million tons, there's definitely an industrial economic value for this iron sulfide but Pedro would rather share his country's art with the world. So we're lucky your passion takes an economic deposit and gives us the crystals. This is another part of the first level. We're in the zone B. Down below here we have larger cubes which have formed in groups that are naturally together. Now this is a rarer formation here because uh, normally you just get the single cubes. But when you get them forming and interlocking together, this is what collectors really like. Taking the larger, more expensive pieces out is an art unto itself. And with such a rich mine, it's easy to get distracted by the finds right beneath your feet. There's pyrites everywhere. It's, it's unbelievable. <laughs> it's, it's hard to keep walking. Yeah. And not stop. Yeah, everywhere you look, there's pyrites. <laughs> well, I didn't even realize, until, but once you start focusing your eyes, cubic shapes on the ground. My pockets are full. <laughs> Aside from owning a supernatural mine, Pedro is a magician in the kitchen. Pedro also runs a small bed and breakfast where he shares the rich culinary history of Spain along with the perfection of pyrite. Navajoon is in La Rioja, the wine region of Spain. Salud. Salud. And after a few glasses, we were ready to see where the most coveted pieces are found. So these, these have such beautiful crystals and the matrix is harder. So when you remove these with the chainsaw, uh, how long till they come to market? When could I buy one? Well, we can take up to a month to prepare uh, these type of specimens. They're very, very special. So as you take these out of here, you use like a Rock hammer? Yes, in this area, we mostly do uh, chisel and hammer. Wow, difficult. Mm -hmm. they're, they're huge, impressive. Yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, they're way larger than, yeah. than what we've seen in the, in the other areas. While Rob and Daniel continued the hunt for pyrites, Pedro and I decided to check out some of the other prehistoric geological history of the area. Pedro tells me that there were three 
basic types of dinosaurs that were very common here in this area that were vegetarian. And one is the Iguanodon, and it ate mainly plants. And the uh, Titanosaurus ate mainly leaves. And the Baryonyx was a vegetarian also, except it did eat fish. And it came to this area to eat the fish that were uh, in the lagoon. Y había algunos carnívoros también claro. que, sí, sí, que sí. comieran de todos esos dinosaurios, sí. ¿no? Siempre donde había herbívoros, había carnívoros. Ah, oh, okay. <risa> Como puedes ver, hay muchas huellas diferentes. Uh -huh. y, eh, yo pienso que sea una familia de iguanodones. Una, una familia de iguanodones que se está, digamos, moviendo o trasladando. Hay que tener en cuenta de que son dinosaurios eh, terópodos y bípedos. Ah. Todo esto era un, un, no un lago, sino un, varios lagos conectados. Y, por supuesto, este estrato no estaba así, okay. estaba llano. Hubo movimientos que levantaron e inclinaron el, el terreno. Y, sin embargo, aquí había otro, una pisada aquí, sí. la otra aquí, la otra aquí. Uh -huh. La otra aquí. Es decir, estos corresponden al mismo dinosaurio, a la forma de andar. The footprint, la, las impresiones de lo, los patos están muy clarito aquí, ¿no? Para mí son las mejores de toda la zona, sin ninguna, sin ninguna duda. Primero por su tamaño y después por su profundidad. Uh -huh, sí. Son las más claras de todas. Son bien claritos. Sí. Muy claras, sí. sí. Esos aquí se puede ver mejor todavía. Pueden ver mejor todavía y se puede seguir perfectamente el rastro. Ah, es sí. Decir, el rastro con el, la, el periodo con el cual el, eh, daba el, el paso. These impressions of dinosaur prints occurred about 120 to 130 million years ago. Mm -hmm. Pyrites, same time as the dinosaurs. After following in the footprints of dinosaurs, I was ready to bring home my own pieces of geological history, and Pedro had me covered. The best pieces from the mine, the ones that take the time and skill to dig, all end up at his warehouse, where he sells them to collectors, dealers, and museums. You just don't see this many really good, clean, perfect pieces in one room. Here's a piece that I think is really sweet. It's got several cubes that are interlocked, and these are interlocked naturally. They haven't been glued together or anything, and they're really aesthetic in the matrix. And then I got a, a couple of more decorative pieces that interior decorators love. Look at all the cubes on there. And then if you move it a little bit, it just like really glitters. With my budget blown on this pyrite party, Pedro invited me to see his private collection. Wow, look at this piece. This is really nice. Several cubes that are all connected together, sitting in the matrix. Lo que deben notar sobre todo es la perfección de las aristas, no están impecables, no tienen ningún roce, están perfectas. Ahora vamos a ver alguna que son auténticas joyas. Ooh. Wow, look at all those interconnected cubes. Twin, totally perfect. You call these twins, right? Yeah. Wow, look at this. These are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cubes that are intricately connected naturally. This is just the way they grew. I love this piece. Ah, <laughs> you do. <laughs> and you do too. <laughs> okay. That is cute. Es como una, that is really cute. Una rosa. <laughs> oh, wow. It's special. Eh? 
Decimos que los, eh, la, los, la, las piritas cristalizan en el sistema cúbico, Ajá. pero no sé si es cierto. <risa> Ese es como una galleta, ¿no? Es una galleta, Es como un like cracker. Es una cu cubic form, pero se formó muy thin. Es una muy rara ocurrencia, ¿no? Muy especial. Porque en realidad no son eh, dos cristales. No, soy, no es un cristal, son dos cristales. Muy bonito. The reason I love what I do is because I get to connect with other passionate collectors who also value the beauty of Earth's creations and sharing them with the world. Spain has been a chapter with many memories to take home. If you want to see more episodes or check out our mineral collection, click the link in the description. And of course, like and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Mineral Explorers.